Now, there was a time when pretty well every local area in the country had its own woolen mills. Indeed, thousands of people were employed in that industry uh, nationwide. However, times have changed, and these days you'll find only a handful uh, of woolen mills surviving, dotted around the country. One such is Kerry Woolen Mills, which hasn't just survived, it's been absolutely thriving and has been doing so for several generations. Geraldine Harney has been finding out the secret of their success. This is a story not just of a factory and what it makes, it's much more. It's about one family's involvement in the business for four generations. Andrew Eady is the current headman. His great-grandfather was the first Eady to get involved in 1904. But the story of Kerry Woolen Mills even goes back further. Yeah, well, it's here over 300 years. Set up originally to alleviate poverty by the Eager family and uh, built here because of the River Gweeston, from which a source of water was available for power and for washing the cloth and dyeing. And has continued through the Eager family and then the Seelys and then my great-grandfather, for some strange reason, came from Scotland in 1904 and purchased it. And I suppose there's no hope about the Atlantic Ocean for us after this. My great-grandfather's Robert Eady. Robert Eady, he, was, he had a very good woolen mill business in Fermanagh and then moved back to Scotland and didn't seem to make a success there and came down to Kerry from there with his two sons who then ran the business after him. For Andrew, growing up next door to the mill, it was just like second nature to him that he would get involved in the family business. Well, growing up here in the mill yard, we were accustomed to running in and out of the mill and then gradually being asked to do small jobs, which became bigger jobs. And when I was 14, I was trained to weave and spent my summers weaving when I wasn't at school. One job became the other. I then learned how to do carding and spinning. And I decided that I wanted to make my future in this business. And following school, I spent a year and a half working here to make sure that I did want to go and then went to Scotland to train in the Scottish College of Textiles. So I returned from Scotland in 1981, so that's 26 or 7 years ago, and my mum and my dad were running the business full time and I joined them, getting my spoke in as I could, and we introduced new machinery and tried to update our production skills and improve our products and our sales profile. Over the years, Andrew and his loyal band of employees have worked tirelessly to bring the company where it is today. Kerry Woolen Mills, first of all, is a traditional company, so we're able to offer people something truly authentic. It's made in Ireland and comes with a bit of the past, a bit of the present, and hopefully a design that will serve us well for the future. We'd like to think that we provide a very good service and we can do custom-made items for customers so we don't, we're not mass market because we wouldn't have the cost structure to do mass market but we're trying to serve niches and provide items that are no longer available or that cannot be made in small quantities by the big producers. We make woolen fabrics and then we make capes, shawls, tweeds and we do speciality blankets for hotels and we also do a niche of organically farmed wool range of products that sells very well to people who are environmentally aware. And we use very fine use Australian merino wool for our clothing items to provide real luxury, softness and try and have exciting colourways that will capture people's attention. One of the niche markets which the company are tapping into is designing and making vestments for priests. Emmett Tinkler, the in-house textile designer, has worked very hard on them and they were showcased in Killarney Cathedral over Easter. Well, fairly recently, yes, we were approached by a local priest to design some vestments. Um, it's something that we hadn't done before and it was somewhat of a challenge, but uh, the end results have turned out pretty well. We're very pleased with them. The priest showed me a selection of vestments that had been made uh, for him uh, over the years. So that gave me an idea of a feel for the type of thing that he was looking for. Um, so then it was a case of sourcing the, the appropriate yarns, uh, woolens and this 
gold and silver uh, lurex thread for the effects, especially effect threads down, down the centre of the garments. Well, we started off with the basic bornine or the, the cream, the white, the off-white colour uh, for the initial samples and then we experimented with colours and of course priests love, they love these very strong colours, um, the, the colours of the uh, the seasons. So we have the vibrant purple, which is everybody loves the purple, uh, and then there's, there's the, the red and the rose colour too, it turned out very well, and the green. So a nice, a nice selection of colours. Now, while the priests of Killarney are new customers, the company has a large and very loyal customer base. Our customers are divided into about four segments. We would have some manufacturers of clothing and headwear that are still working in the British Isles and we would supply them with tweed. We serve hotels and guest houses with blankets. We serve retail shops in Ireland and abroad with products that they can resell to their customers. And finally, we do speciality products that, like for the equestrian industry, we make particular horse ruggings and special products for people like that. We also have our own retail shops and we sell through them directly to the public. Naturally, given that the company is located in the heart of Kerry, tourists, especially Americans, are very important. The American is the lifeblood of our business. They outspend and appreciate our products more than any other customer by miles. So. We're conscious always of the exchange rate with the dollar and any reason why they mightn't travel because we're totally attuned to them and their requirements. They're a great nation for spending. They're not people for hiding it under the mattress. And they also have a positive attitude to Irish products. It is now 104 years since the Edies got involved in Kerry Woolen Mills. So where to from here? Well, that's a good question where to now. It's hard to think beyond tomorrow's breakfast. We'd hope that we can develop our internet more. We'd hope that our retail shops will improve. They're doing quite well. And we'd hope to build on our customers in America and abroad and in Europe that we do quite well with. And we'd like to see links like that developed. But it's very difficult to know exactly where you're going because credit is a problem getting paid and getting the margins we need to keep the business alive. It's tough going. A thriving industry.